Welcome back to our conversation with the state auditor, Diana DiZoglio. And uh, Diana, you filed a bill that caught my eye that would require the state to fully reimburse cities and towns for the taxes they would otherwise be receiving on state-owned land mm -hmm. if that land were subject to property taxes, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, these are otherwise known as pilots. Our mm -hmm. viewers may have heard of this, payments in lieu of taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, this is also a big issue, pilots, for cities like Boston that have a large number of nonprofit property owners, colleges, hospitals, and so on. Are you contemplating doing something about that aspect of pilots? Uh, we'll look into assisting with uh, pilot reform in any way, shape, or form our office is able to. Uh, as you know, we are able to audit state agencies and state-owned property. Uh, so there might be some way that we can coordinate with the AG's office, for example, or the IG's office, for example, or the legislature and the administration uh, to take a look at the impacts uh, of what we're discussing here. Uh, but that particular proposal, I'm actually glad that you raised it. Uh, we were just in Western Massachusetts uh, this week. We were in Williamsburg and presenting on the tremendous need for pilot reform. There are inequities uh, across our communities right Right now where some communities are receiving uh, thousands and thousands and thousands more uh, in reimbursements from the state for the same amount of acreage, uh, our state forests, our state parks, and the communities that host them. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, are, are actually contributing to carbon sequestration. Mm -hmm. They are uh, actually losing money many times for hosting those beautiful state forests and state land. Uh, unfortunately, they should be being rewarded for hosting that state land and, and those state properties. Uh, but it's quite the opposite. So we want to make sure that we're encouraging uh, the beautification of our communities and that we are not punishing communities who host these these. Yeah, states. because the cities and towns provide police, fire, all sorts of services to these nonprofit or exactly. tax exempt lands but uh, exactly. don't get uh, any payback. And if they don't get those reimbursements from the state that right. trickles down to the local senior center to education funding in their community and like you said to those public safety uh, and public uh, public buildings overall their libraries their services all now, another function of your office is to review and approve any requests to privatize state services. Have you received any since you took office? Uh, we actually are uh, looking into a situation right now uh, with UMass Amherst, uh, where there was an allegation that the proper protocol was not uh, implemented and not followed regarding the Taxpayer Protection Act. Uh, our office is working. A contract with, issued by UMass? Uh, that there was a some yeah. sort of a con contractual issue there potentially. Okay. Uh, but our office is doing research right now, uh, working with UMass officials to identify if there were uh, some challenges in the way that that process uh, has been evolving. And one other recent uh, bit of news your office made you did uh, you did an audit that found. Uh, nearly $85 million in payments from Massachusetts health care funds went to managed care organizations for out-of-state residents. Uh, people who don't even live here were receiving payments from us. How, uh, how, how did that happen? Yeah, so we uh, just released this audit yesterday, so thank you for bringing it up. Uh, Mass Health does need to be held to account for why this occurred and why it was not caught in the current uh, accountability system that they do have implemented. Uh, our office did identify nearly $85 million in overpayments to these managed care organizations uh, for folks that were residing out of the state of Massachusetts and other states or territories. And uh, the response from MassHealth was unfortunately not one of cooperation, not one of accepting responsibility uh, for that occurrence. Uh, I am meeting with the secretary tomorrow uh, of Health and Human Services, uh, who has been, um, you know, very welcoming to this conversation. She's a new secretary, so okay. I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping uh, that with this new administration, things change. But to the how does something like that occur, we had identified that uh, right now MassHealth is using a system called MARS. Uh, we compared that with a system called TMSIS. <laughs> it's a different database yeah. uh, that actually allows for uh, a comparative analysis 
differences between who is receiving Medicaid and other uh, health care benefits in other states okay. uh, and compare that with who is receiving health care benefits in our state. So in conducting that analysis, uh, there were data matches that actually uh, outlined that folks were actually receiving health care through another state's health care program and well, simultaneously still enrolled in mass health well uh, so that needs to be caught and we made some recommendations on how to do that and we demonstrated that if our auditors were able to do it mass health can certainly be doing that for themselves to prevent this from happening yeah i mean future. that's like leaving the windows wide open in the dead of winter and just heating the whole outdoors, uh, not something I think the taxpayers are thrilled about. Uh, uh, Madam Auditor, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, John. It's great to be here. Come with again everybody. soon. Thank you. Sure. Well. And thank